It's time for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Coaches Show. Tries to get it inside, got the ball back, avoided the turnover, eight on the shot clock, seven on the shot clock. Tominaga, a 30-footer up, got it! Oh, my God! To St. Tominaga! For six minutes to go! Holy cow! Bryce Williams puts his head down, drives the ball, third defender comes, can't score it. Put back in on a tip dunk, high in the air above the cylinder, with a jam with the right hand. Jawan Gary. The ball throws it right side. Lawrence with a good look. Got it. Got it. Got it. Three ball. Lawrence come picking up where he left off. And Indiana with his 26 3 of the year. It's 12 9. Here comes Williams across the timeline. 4 0. Cornhuskers. Williams in front of the Rutgers bench. Down inside. Alec with a jam. Took it to the hole off the pass. The mass. Huskers are up. 6 0. The lid's coming off the ball. Now with Fred Hoy. Hey everybody, welcome into the show in our Nebraska Men's Basketball Hour. What a great weekend of hoops. If you're a Huskers fan, you saw the Nebraska women's team make a run to the finals. And then Fred Hoyberg's crew closing out the regular season with a win, 85-70 over Michigan. Coach, congratulations. Yeah, I just, first of all, I just want to say how great it was to follow Amy's team. And, you know, very inspiring. Our team talked about it, to use what they're doing as inspiration uh, for our own um, uh, finish to the season. And, you know, to go all the way, I think they had a five-point lead. When our game ended, and right before I did the post-game interview with Nick Baugh, Seamus came up to me, McKnight, our, our sports information director, and let me know that they were up five with a minute and a half to go. So just an unbelievable fight. Uh, you know, it sounds like they were basically playing a road game up there with, you know, the Caitlin Clark and, you know, all the attention and the way they're traveling right now for that team. So just an awesome uh, run and I think a great confidence builder uh, for those guys. But they, they've just had a phenomenal season. It's been fun to watch. And, yeah, I was really proud of how our team went out and played a really kind of a hard game. He played an 11 a.m. Central game with losing an hour. And, you know, essentially for us, it was like playing a 10 a.m. game. And you always worry a little bit about that with those early ones. And, you know, we always talk. Anytime you play uh, those early games with a, with a, with a, uh, uh, with a tip, <clears throat> excuse me, tip before noon, you have to come out and set the tone. And our guys did exactly that. That first half, our movement was absolutely phenomenal. We were getting the ball uh, to the right guy, which was Kese. We found him in transition. Uh, we set some uh, ball screens for him when he handled where he got to the rim. And just a really fun first half. I, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, I didn't think our defensive energy uh, was great, our edge. But when I went back and watched on film, you know, they made a lot of tough shots. And Doug McDaniel specifically. And that, that's the danger of that team. He is so dynamic, one of the most dynamic players, playmakers in, in the Big Ten and, you know, a different team than what we faced a couple weeks ago in PBA. When he's on the floor, uh, he just adds such a different element to their team. And uh, he made tough shots, like end of the shot clock, deep threes, contested threes. And in the second half, you know, he didn't make those same shots. And that's why we extended that thing up to 20 at one point and, and went away with a 15-point win. But that was an important game for us, uh, as you know, Jessica, to finish out the season the right way, uh, you know, to get another road win under our belt. That's three now with the Kansas State game, which turned out to be a quad one win after they beat Iowa State, an unbelievable Iowa State team. And then uh, getting the Indiana win, and they're playing great basketball right now. And then to find a way to get this one on Sunday uh, was a huge win for our resume. It was an early start, and you lost an hour, right? We lost an hour, yeah. So that's <laughs> so, what I'm saying. It was like a 10 a.m. Yeah, start. Really... And the one benefit we have is we practice in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we played all over the map this year. We, we had an 8.30 game um, on the road at Indiana. We played another 8.30 game earlier in the year. We played several 5.30 games. And that's going to benefit us come postseason time. You know, we'll go from an 11 a.m. Uh, start on Sunday to an 8 p.m. game on Friday. And, you know, when we won the Big 12 tournament at Iowa State my last year, every game we played for the, like the last two months, it seemed like, was an 8 p.m. start. And then they put us in the first game of the tournament on Thursday at 11 a.m. So our body clocks were all screwed up, and we ended up getting upset that, that, uh, that year as a three seed. So, you know, the fact that we played so many different games with, with different times, I really do think that'll benefit us uh, come tournament time. Yeah, that's fascinating. I guess you never think about that. But, yeah, it can be. If you get into a certain, 
I guess, routine where you're accustomed to a certain time, but then it, when it moves around, it, it's got to got to certainly help. It, yeah, it, it does, and and that that's you know my my point on all that is we played at pretty much every yeah. time you can possibly play from the 11 a.m. game, um, you know, all the way up to the 8:30 p.m. game, and if we do, uh, you know, go. On a little bit of a run this week, it's going to be 8 p.m. the first game, and then the next day you got to bounce back and play at 2:30, which is pretty unfair with that short of a recovery time. But you know, we'll go one game at a time. That's what this team has done a really good job of: is they're taking it one game at a time right now, and they're staying focused on the task at hand. And that's why I think we're playing our best basketball this season right now. 402-413-2400 is that number to text in if you got a text or a question or a comment for the coach here on our show tonight over the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, well, Casey was out of his mind unconscious. How much fun is that when, when he is playing like that and he just cannot miss? Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. And the great thing is to see the guys really seek him out and try to find him. Uh, I mean, he hit the one from the M, from the logo. <laughs> Uh, coming down a transition on a dribble up three, and those are those are so hard those shots. Uh, but every time our guys pass him the ball, then a couple times like Jawan threw him a pass, and he just ran back instead of going to the glass, which is one of his <laughs> biggest strengths because he knew it was going in. And you know he just he's the biggest area of improvement in Casey's game is his ability to get to the basket, yeah. and you saw that on multiple occasions in that Michigan game. Uh, you know hitting threes, deep threes. Uh, but uh, very, you know, equally as impressive was his ability to get to the basket. His cutting has been so good. Rink and he have developed the chemistry that Casey and Derek had a year ago. Josiah has made some really good passes to him as well. And then I thought Casey did a good job screening. He got Juwan a layup in transition by just going up and back screening his man. And, you know, we just kind of played a flow type package. I didn't call a ton of plays. It was just go out there. Uh, you know, get into a split type game. And I thought our guys really read uh, the defense well. And, uh, and that's what got us a lot of points in the paint. We outscored Michigan, a bigger, more physical team, 48 to 26 in the paint. Where does Casey rank among some of the better shooters that you've coached? Oh, he's up there at the top. I mean, I, I've had some good ones. We had a team at Iowa State that led the nation in threes, and that had some really good shooters with. Uh, Matt Thomas, who played in the NBA, Tyrus McGee, led the nation in threes that year. George Niang is one of the top three-point shooters in the league. I remember uh, those guys. Right now, you remember <laughs> being in Oklahoma. And, you know, just we had so many guys that could make shots. And, you know, Casey, especially, you know, you look at him right now, and, you know, he obviously had an adjustment period when he first got to Nebraska. And there were some games that he really struggled with the physicality. And that's where I give him so much credit is how he has – gained his strength that has allowed him to bang against bigger, stronger opponents. And ability to get his shot off, even though he is basically getting face guarded out there against a lot of teams. So just it's been remarkable to see uh, the progress that Casey has made. And a lot of it has to do with the strength. But as far as just being a straight shooter, yeah, there's, there's not many better than him. Ring Bass has 15 points yesterday. How good was it to see him get going again offensively? Yeah, it really was good. And, you know, they, they backed off him on one play because our cutting was so good. And, you know, when we cut with force and cut with pace like we were yesterday and get into the basket, <clears throat> now the big will back off rink a little bit. And you saw that happen, I think, twice where he just rose up and knocked down a three. Uh, uh, and, you know, when he's making shots out there, forcing the big away from the basket, uh, that just opens up things for everybody. Uh, Josiah was another guy that I thought played a really efficient game. You know, we really wanted to attack feet yesterday, and we made seven threes, which I think is almost three below our, our average. Uh, but we really did a good job of attacking uh, their feet, getting the ball into the paint. And like I said, when you score 48 in the paint, generally that, that's a good sign. I was going to ask you about Josiah Alec in the last couple of games. What, what kind of mission are you seeing him on here to close up his, his career? Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's playing the best he's played all year. Mm -hmm. And it's coming, obviously, at a great time. You want to be clicking. You want to be playing your best at this time of the season. And a big part of that is Josiah. He's just been uh, terrific. Juwan has just been Mr. Consistency for us. He you know, played another really uh, good, complete game on both ends of the floor. Uh, but when you have Josiah out there setting the tone with his energy and making a lot of little plays, and I thought he really attacked the basket yesterday, and he's shooting the ball at, at, a, at a good clip right now. He's not shooting a lot of threes, uh, but he's shooting a solid percentage. You know, 
we had Ernie Ziegler on last week, and he had talked about how Juwan really embraces that junkyard dog type role. And but when you've got two guys that are like that, like in Juwan and Josiah, that are willing to kind of be physical and sacrifice themselves, what does that do for a basketball team? Yeah, it, it's not the glory role that let's say Kase has. And you know, when you go back and look at the highlights, a lot of times it is Kase. But then you get the tip dunks. Juwan had one two games ago. Josiah had an unbelievable uh, putback. Uh, off a miss and you know those guys just they've really embraced and that's a, another thing about this team and all good teams have it it's been role acceptance uh, you know we have so many different guys that can get it going lead our team in scoring uh, Juwan and Josiah included but their roles every night is to go out there and make effort plays and get on the floor uh, very rarely is a scrum going to happen where Josiah or Juwan doesn't come out with it <laughs> And they've just done a great job embracing the role that has been given to them. And then they're opportunistic scorers. And, you know, we do run some ISO plays uh, for Juwan. Uh, you know, Josiah has the freedom to attack. And, you know, when they sit in the paint off of Josiah, uh, he knows he needs to knock down those corner threes. And he's done a, a much better job of that as the season has gone on. Maybe at one point when the schedule came out, probably maybe felt like it wasn't ideal to have that bye week going into the, the final regular season game. But how good was it, though, for this team? They seemed to be pretty rested and uh, going into that game yesterday. Yeah, it, it, it really did come at a great time because we did have a few guys that were banged up going into that. So we were able to get them two days of rest. Um, you know, that third day that we sandwiched a, um, a, a workout in uh, was light. And then we managed the loads in practice with a couple of the guys that needed to get some recovery. And it, 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 you're right. When I looked at it, I was not thrilled because we had two bye weeks basically in, in a four-week span. Uh, but it came at a good time, and now we get a little extra time to recover as well. And that was the importance of that game yesterday is it got us the double bye. So we don't have to play now until Friday. We had today off. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a little bit lighter. And then we'll have, um, you know, a little bit harder practice heading into, uh, into Minneapolis. Art in Los Angeles on our text line, please ask the coach this question. How is he going to celebrate after he gets the Coach of the Year <laughs> award? I want to be the first one to congratulate him on this award, GBR. A, a lot of people up here, I know Kent and Jake have talked about it. We've talked about it. Uh, Greg and I uh, feel that you absolutely are, are deserving of that. But, uh, you know, and Ernie Ziegler last week said the same thing. But it takes a lot for you to for you to be the guy that's the Coach of the Year. I know you'll be the first to say it. a lot goes into that. Well, yeah, and thanks for the message, Art. But there's a long way. <laughs> to go on that. I think all the awards, postseason awards, get announced tomorrow, but there's a lot of deserving coaches in our league. I, you know, you look at Matt Painter, what he has done with the team, you know, having three losses on the season. Uh, I think Chris Collins has had a phenomenal year this, with a couple of the injuries uh, that they have suffered. I think Ben Johnson, that team was picked last. Uh, you know, they've had a couple setbacks lately, but they were right there in the middle of the pack. Um, you know, so there's a lot of guys. Jake Diebler's done a phenomenal job since the change of, uh, of the coach in o at Ohio State. So there's a lot of them. I mean, this is a great league with, with unbelievable coaching. And I'll say this, you know, when you have a good staff uh, that is tied in together, it gives you a chance. And, you know, I've been really impressed with the job that our assistant coaches do on a daily basis to help get our guys prepared to go out and play. And then, you know, the guys in the video room, Mike, Michael Banya, uh, is absolutely phenomenal uh, with what he does. The amount of hours those guys put in uh, to put the video edits uh, together, and uh, and really everybody. I've just you know I'm really happy with uh, with the staff, and they've done an excellent job all season. You know, you talk about postseason awards for this team. It's kind of hard to pick who would be if you say first team, second team, because you have so many different guys. That's that's a kind of a good thing, a good problem to have when you're like, who do you pick on this team if you, you're putting in a vote for the Huskers? Well, we, we, we're very balanced. And, you know, I don't think we have anybody in the top 25 in scoring, but we've got a lot of guys right there. We've got a lot of guys in double figures. And then we've got a lot of other guys. You know, you talked about two of them earlier with Juwan, with, uh, with, um, um, with Josiah, you know, Sam, Jamarcus. Uh, you know, all those guys go into, you know, the defensive hustle-type plays. And then, you know, certainly guys that can make shots for us. CJ's had a phenomenal year uh, for us, uh, knocking down shots as well. Bryce Williams is, uh, is just, you know, does everything. Uh, for this team. So it, it really is a group that has a lot of balance to it. And, you know, when you have a team that it, it's hard to prepare for and taking away one go-to guy because the next guy can step up and hurt you. So, yeah, it is. I agree with you, Jessica, but hopefully we get a couple guys that are recognized. 
I uh, got another text for you. This season has been so much fun, Fred. Uh, much more fun than years past recently. Would love a detailed answer on what changed within the program from 2020 to now in regards to coaching philosophies, player identification, acquisition, practice habits, game planning, all that stuff. Well, I think it started with last year's team. And, you know, when you look back on uh, that group, you know, we were 8-2 and two in the 10 games where we had our starting lineup. And then you lose Bandamel, you lose Juwan, uh, who are two – you know, that team was really gritty last year, and that really had the, the defensive identity that I think you've seen, especially the last six weeks. You know, it really started with those guys. And, you know, when we lost them, we went through a tough stretch in January, but then February, we really got it rolling again. But, you know, I think if we stayed healthy last year, we definitely would have been a postseason team. And, you know, so it really started with last year's group, and they were tough and, you know, together. We really wanted to kind of emulate what that group was like and build the roster the same way. So when we went out and you know looked at the portal and looked at freshmen coming in here, we wanted that same type of makeup, you know, hard playing, unselfish guys, uh, you know, that go out there and play the right way. And you know, I think you've seen that uh, with this group this year. As far as philosophy, uh, you know, we've changed up a little bit, like I always try to do, based on the offensive skill set of the players. But um, you know, there's a lot of the same type things that, that we've done, you know, really since I've been in coaching. Uh, just tweaks based on the roster. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, you just got a really good group of guys. And, you know, I've had a couple players, that uh, former players, that have messaged me just saying how proud they are and how easy this group of guys is to root for uh, just because of their makeup. And, th and that's what we want to continue to do is have a group of unselfish players that play the right way. How about now you got people saying the argument that this could be one of the best, if not the best, basketball team that Nebraska's ever had? Well, there, listen, there's been some great ones, and a lot of those were ones that I played against in college back in the early 90s. And, uh, you know, yeah, so there's been a lot of really good teams. You know, I, I, I hope we can continue on with this trend. It's such a fun group to coach, and, you know, we just need to continue to go out there. And, and that's the thing about postseason. Sometimes you think you have to go out there and reinvent the wheel and do things uh, you know, a little bit extra. All we need to do is continue on with the things that have made us a successful team these last couple months and uh, have given us a chance most nights. Appreciate the text coming in on our text line. I see a few more coming in. We will get to those on the other side of this break. And again, those are coming in on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More with Coach Hoiberg coming up right after this. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor-saving measures, ground-truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting-edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Nebraska men's basketball show, I'm Jessica Cootie alongside the head coach, Fred Hoiberg. We've got uh, several texts coming in for you. A few, um, well, a couple ones want to know about some of the guys that have the eligibility to come back. What do those conversations look like? Um, you know, I know some guys are eligible to done with KSA and Josiah, but some of the other guys that could potentially come back, how does that conversation look? How does that, I guess, decision process work? Yeah, I mean, that, that'll all take place at the end of the season. Certainly you have conversations, uh, you know, at, at, at this time, but, you know, the, that'll all take place once, once the season ends. And then a couple other ones coming in about how's recruiting going um, for the future. Obviously, uh, excited about this season, but Andy and Phoenix and uh, one other person wanted to know about just the recruiting, how recruiting is going, and how much has the winning culture this season helped in that recruiting uh, regard? Yeah, there's no doubt that that helps. And especially when you're playing on the national stage, like we're going to be here these next couple weeks. And, you know, I'm really excited about the two freshmen that we've got coming in next year. I went and saw Nick Janowski play uh, last week in a game and they just qualified for the state tournament there there's four uh, teams left that are going to play at the Cole Center in Wisconsin and they're going for their fourth consecutive state championship but he can really score the ball you know he's one of those guys he throws it in bounds or it goes in bounds and then they just go right to a face guard and he, he put up 30 uh, 30 points eight rebounds four assists um, in a win over a really good team and then they went against another really good team in their last game to qualify uh, for the state tournament run, but comes from a winning culture and, you know, plays for a great coach, 
with a lot of movement. So he'll fit in really well with how we play. And then Braden Frager, who had a really good end of the season. He got hurt, was really struggling with an ankle injury throughout the season, uh, but he played phenomenal uh, in his last, uh, last couple weeks of the season. And just a high-flying athlete, kid that can really make shots. Uh, both lefties, you know, and take KSA, you know, losing a lefty and, you know, adding a couple more that can really score the ball. And, uh, and again, I think guys that will really fit in the program. And then we'll see. You know, we'll see from here uh, how things go. But, yes, winning and being on the national stage absolutely helps with recruiting. I think you and I have talked about this before, but what is it about those lefty shooters? <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, I played with one of the greatest. Actually, the best pure shooter I ever played with was Chris Mullen. Mm -hmm. And he would just get that thing in the exact same spot every single time. It was just a thing of beauty. Okay, so had a question here regarding the Big Ten tournament in preparation. First of all, I guess you guys, did you guys go into that game, hey, this double by, how important that would be making a run in a, in a Big Ten tournament? Uh, we talked about it for mm -hmm. sure, yeah. And, you know, listen, if you don't talk about it, they're reading about it. So they know, they know what's at stake. And, and we talk about going out there and taking care of business and then going from there. And that's, again, when you win seven out of eight to end the season, uh, you know, it shows your guys have the focus that they need to go out there and take care of the task at hand. And, you know, that's the really impressive thing about this group is how well they prepared, whatever the result was. We had one disappointing loss in there, the Ohio State game, you know, a game that we had every opportunity to win, uh, but our guys didn't hang their heads. They bounced back and had a couple of really good wins that we absolutely needed. So on that note, Mike from Omaha wants to know, will you practice against sets on Tuesday, Thursday from all three teams you might play Friday? Yeah, great question. And we, we met as a staff and talked about that today. And we are going to start working on different sets from each team that we could potentially play. And, you know, the, the benefit, obviously, you know these teams. We played uh, just recently Indiana, uh, you know, played them twice. We played Penn State uh, pretty recently, obviously just getting done playing Michigan. Those are the three teams. Uh, that we could potentially face on Friday evening. And, uh, you know, we'll have, we'll be prepared. And obviously two completely different teams, uh, or sorry, three completely different teams. But, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start preparing for any uh, scenario that we could see on Friday. We'll start preparing tomorrow for that. Here's a great question for you. After ne Nebraska ball is crowned national champions, golf season is upon us in April. Who is the better golfer between you and Sam? And what are your top three golf courses in the Lincoln, Omaha area? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> um, you know, Sam is a better golfer. Is than... he the best golfer in the family? No, no. Okay. He's probably, uh, you, Char his twin brother Charlie is the best. He won, he won the uh, districts. He shot a 68 um, in the district meet and then was, I think, three under after one round in the first round of state. And, uh, yeah, so I would give Charlie the nod on being the best golfer. Uh, and then Jack, who played at Michigan State. Jack actually had a golf scholarship he, that he had signed, and he was all set to go play golf in college and then uh, had a really good senior year of hoops. So he decided to go that route and wants to get into coaching. I'm trying to talk him out of it. But, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's working for the San Antonio Spurs now. I know I've mentioned that in the past. Uh, and then Sam. Sam probably hits it the furthest. He can, he can really bomb it. And you know, I think we've also talked about this. They're all three left-handed uh, on – uh, with their golf swing, uh -huh. golf and baseball, they were they were all uh, lefties. Um, so yeah, those guys passed me a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> every once in a while, I can still get out and uh, and, and beat them. But yeah, those uh, those those days are kind of sad when your kids just start out hitting you when they're like 12 years old. <laughs> I feel like Sam probably wouldn't agree with that though. That he's third. Yes. He definitely wouldn't agree. He with He would it. say he's best. That, I feel he like he he's would. pretty competitive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think? Yeah. But <laughs> I was trying to put it lightly. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Jessica, facts are facts. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with that order. We'll have to make sure he knows about that. Okay. Did you p say your favorite golf courses in oh, this area? Oh, favorite golf courses. Yeah. I, I mean, I love Firethorn. I think that's one of the top courses. Um, uh, I, I like the country club, and it's kind of cool. My grandfather, uh, my grandparents belong to the country club. My grandpa played that course uh, a bunch, uh, so I really, I really do like uh, that course as well. Omaha Country Club is a phenomenal uh, golf course. Lost Rail, the new course in Gretna, is, is a beautiful uh, course. And, you know, I'm really fortunate to have gone out and played the Sand Hills uh, on numerous occasions. I just love it out there. Uh, Dick Young's cap, who is the uh, founder and the owner and one of the pioneers, especially in remote golf courses, uh, he used to date my aunt in high school. So it's kind of cool now, uh, you know, to get out there and, and be able to play a uh, play course of that caliber. Got to be nice. Um you know, living in Nebraska, probably not a lot of people outside of here know how good the golf courses yeah. are here in this yeah. state. It, it, you're 100% right, and it, it really is. It's fun, uh, you know, and they're so different. You mm -hmm. know, all the, all the courses are different, and there's so many of them, and, you know, it's, it's really, um, 
it's been fun, uh, you know, to get out and play the different types of courses. Appreciate all the texts coming in. Again, uh, we will keep asking Coach those questions. We've got one more segment left with Coach Hoyberg, and then we're going to hear from Casey Tominaga here in our final segment of our Nebraska Men's Basketball Hour. But got to get to another break here. So contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Keep it here. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammate's mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. This statement is not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. 
Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Final segment here with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Then we're going to hear from Casey Tomanaga after his monster night last night. Um, got another one more question going back to golf and then uh, we'll, we'll talk hoops again um, in this final segment. But we can talk crypto- golf the rest of the way. <laughs> right? <laughs> like this. Crypto King in the chat said, wow, all of Fred's kids are lefties. Is Fred left-handed? That is very unusual. Well, you probably could have cut my left hand off and I would have had the same <laughs> career, but um, when I was playing for the Bulls, my wife and I were playing in a, in a uh, co-ed softball little deal just for fun and then, you know, I'd go out to the bar after and have a good time. But um, I could not hit the ball right-handed. I was like striking. So all of a sudden I went lefty and I was just crushing the ball. So, yeah, I've kind of converted to left. I <laughs> cut with my left hand. Huh. Um, yeah, and I got to give my wife some credit. She's, she's, an, uh, she's a very natural. Uh, she was a state champion hurdler and, you know, in a really good natural golfer. She plays like three times a year. We played last year. She went to play nine holes through seven. She was one under. So she can, wow. she can really hit it. So that's, where I think, where the boys get their kind of natural golf ability. And one course I forgot to mention that I really like is, uh, is Arbor Links. That's a great course in Nebraska City. You've also said, too, that Sam definitely got his defensive ability from her as well. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> he, he definitely did not get that from me. Well, Coach, going into the season, you guys are picked to finish 12th. Here you are, the three seed, going into the Big Ten tournament, have a double bye. You talked a lot about how much you've enjoyed coaching this team, but was there a point where you realized, okay, this team could be pretty special? I I just think right when we put the team together and as we got to know them really in our preparation for the foreign trip to Spain, it just was a team that came to work every day and they competed every day. You know, what that means, what that equates to, you don't know. Uh, But, you know, they just came in with a professional type mindset. And when you have a group like that, that certainly makes our job a lot easier and a hell of a lot more enjoyable. So to get these guys, you know, the very first time that we went out and practiced, and then, you know, I mentioned this the other day, we haven't had maybe one time we've had a guy show up late when and his alarm clock didn't go off. You know, other than that, they've been on time. You know, they've been in there. They've been ready to go once the whistle blows. They've been very attentive in the film sessions. They're coachable. And it just has been, this will go down as one of my all-time favorite groups that I've ever coached. And I've had some enjoyable ones at you know at, at multiple levels so you know to have a group that is as professional as these guys are you know they take care of their bodies uh, you know they just they're bought into everything that we're that we're trying to uh, teach them and coach them on in a lot of different areas nutrition weight room um, you know in the training room they're just it's just a really good group of kids so when you have that um, you know and I found out that early you don't put limits on them you know you just go out there every day and you prepare and uh, and that's what I've been really impressed with this group so you've been part of some teams that have made runs in a, a conference tournament. What goes into putting together um, a three-game performance where you are maybe lifting a trophy at the end of it? Yeah, it's just, you know, the old one-at-a-time mantra. That's, that's what you have to do, and, you know, it starts with our, our game on Friday night. And, you know, we'll get the benefit of going down there and scouting, um, you know, those games and, uh, you know, just trying to go out and play well in that first one on Friday night. And then, you know, there's nothing better. And I talked about this after the game the other day. You know, I've been a part of two, um, you know, championship celebrations. And you get up on that ladder and you cut down the net. You remember that for the rest of your life. And, you know, we're going to be in that situation here uh, with the opportunity uh, to go out there on Friday and hopefully make a little bit of a run. And then, you know, then this is fun. This is the fun time of year, Jessica. And I told her, guys, enjoy this. Enjoy this ride. John Cook, uh, you know, continuously texts me. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you enjoy the ride that you guys are going on uh, right now. And sometimes you forget to do that. You get so caught up, uh, you know, in the everyday battle, you know, that you forget to take a breath and, you know, smile every once in a while and enjoy it. And, you know, I've talked to our guys about that. You know, they're very businesslike. They will continue to be. Uh, but this is something special uh, that they're accomplishing and, and, you know, have the opportunity to do something that has never been done in this program. I love that. 
Uh, final two quick questions. Uh, is Fred ta team tailor made, ping, or Titleist? We, we, we've got multiple golf questions. Yeah, this on there. is awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I'll, let's do the golf show next week. Yeah, but no, I, uh, I'm I'm a tailor made guy. I because I wore Adidas when I played, and, and Adidas owned tailor made. That was one of the things that that I was not real thrilled with is when they split when when it, when tailor made was acquired by another company. But when I was playing, I got the new tailor maids every year. So I've always been a tailor made guy. And then since we're talking golf, what's your current handicap and lowest ever score? Lowest ever score was a 67. I had one of those rounds where everything went right. I birdied every par five and and um, and, and one of the par fours. And um, right now it's go it's it's just steadily climbing, Jessica. I'm getting worse every. I just don't <laughs> I just don't put enough time into it now. I, I used yeah. to when I was playing in the league, I would play darn near every day. And then when the boys were growing up, since they had such a passion for it, I would take them out, and that got me. Uh, going, I just don't play enough anymore, uh, and I don't. It, it doesn't bother me like it used to. Like if I had a bad round, uh, you know, it kind of eat, eat my, you know, eat my inside. But now I just, it, it just doesn't bother me anymore. So I go out there. I like to have fun and relax a little bit, but I just don't get out there enough. I think my current handicap is right around a seven. Well, a fun show again. Uh, thanks for listening to this hour of the Nebraska golf slash basketball show. <laughs> but uh, we're going to let you get out of here. We're going to hear from Casey Tomanaga. But best of luck this week. And again, uh, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jessica. Great to talk to you. And that is Fred Hoiberg here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavor abilities. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Casey Tomanaga. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location while supplies last. See Lowe's.com for details. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up.
Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Final segment of our Nebraska men's basketball show, and we're going to hear from Casey Tomanaga. Boy, what a game he had yesterday. 30 points was uh, 5 of 8 from three-point line, 12 of 15, 17 from the field. It was just unbelievable getting to the rim, it showed how much his game has grown, but uh, had a chance recently to sit down with Casey as his career is winding down as a Husker. Take me back to when you were transferring from junior college and you start looking at schools, why you landed on Nebraska. You know, like, so I was playing at a JUCO, the, they offered me at the, for, as a Nebraska, and then, you know, I, I got a lot of, like, seeing attractive about, you know, like, coaching stuff, you know, culture stuff that they have. So I was super, you know, fortunate to, you know, come to here. How has Coach Hoiberg helped you grow your game? You know, he helped me a lot of stuff. Like, it's not, it's not just the offensive stuff. Like, it's, you know, everything, like, my overall, the, as a basketball player, I think he helped me a lot. Like, especially, like, offense, you know, offense, offensive stuff, he helped me a lot. Like, my, like, offensive ability, like, he used a lot. So it's, like, super, you know, he helped me a lot. Where did your shooting ability come from? Why did you develop into the shooter you became? You know, like, I was, when I was young, I, I love, you know, I just loved the shooting, the basketball, since I was young. So I think that's how I grew my shooting ability. Have you found, like, again, throughout your career, you've had to tweak and find ways to get your shot off with as, the, as good and good as you became as a shooter, you've had to find ways to create your shot? I keep practicing, like, as a, you know, as a pra you know, like, from the practice. You know, people got me, like, hard, super hard, but still, you know, I got to be, I got to create, you know, create the, uh, create the angle, create the space to make it, you know, make a shot, like, something like that. Also, like, if I, if I, if I, like, if I bring the two guys on me, like, I can just, you know, pass to them, pass to, the, you know, pass to somebody else, and then they're going to be open, too. So, you know, I got to use my ability to use it. Yeah. On that note, how has this team helped you and the, with the ability that you guys pass the basketball, you've made some great passes, but how does that help your game too, that you have some guys that, that can help on the offensive end? You know, I think we have like a very good offensive team right now, especially, you know, the, who, who we have in the, in the team. Like, we move the ball pretty well, we share the ball very well, like we can, we have guys where we can, like they can score the ball, you know. So it's, I think it's, it works pretty, you know, pretty good for us, you know, right now. Why, when you were growing up, and when did the, the decision become that you wanted to come to the United States and play basketball? So I wanted to come to the United States since I was young, but that was just one of my dream. Like, I wasn't even thinking real, but, you know, like, after my high school, high school year, like, maybe that's the, you know, best timing to, you know, try to, you know, try to play at America, and then, you know, that, and then I ended up, being to, ended up going to the JUCO, you know, so that was, you know, well, my dream since, yeah, you know, I was young, so that was... So what has it felt like to live out that dream? It, I think it was very tough in the first, like, couple of years because I couldn't speak English at all. But, you know, I think I had a lot of, a lot of experience here. Also, like, super, you know, fun time here, so... It, there's no denying your passion, and you are a guy that wears your emotions up emotions on your sleep. Why do you love basketball so much? I think it's just naturally coming up, coming out. I think that that's how I know that I love, the, I love playing basketball. You know, I love sharing the moment with everybody, you know. Yeah, I think that's how I know that I love basketball. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about yourself? What, have, what are some of the big things you've taken away from your time playing college basketball here in the United States? I think like keep trusting that you can do it. Like, like you never give up. You know, you just you always gonna keep trying to you know get better. I think that's a, that's what that's what you know at the basketball college basketball. And you've become such a superstar back home. How has that been for you to see the kind of inspiration and role model you've been to people back home? You know, it's a nice feeling. You know, for me to like every time I go back to Japan, you know, people you know people recognize me a lot. Also, like you know, can be the you know one of the like a role model for the kids too. That's like that's like a nice feeling too. You know, so people trying to be like me. You know, that's 
but I still gotta be, you know, get better, you know, every day. So, yeah, it's a nice feeling. What is your message? What do you tell those young kids that are looking up, hoping to do what you did? I think you know, keep, keep continuing trying hard. You know, never like, like if you have a, if you get an opportunity, that just you know, do do hundred percent you can do. You know, yeah, I think that's all you can. Yeah. What does it meant to you the way that Husker Nation cheers for you, roots for you, has gotten behind you? You know, it's it's super special for me. You know, like I had so much fun here. You know, I had so much fun with the, you know with the fans. You know, at play at the P Pinnacle Bank Arena. That was like, I don't think we can do that without them. You know. So you could have left after last year. Why did you decide to come back and play this final season of college basketball here in Nebraska? Yeah, I wanted to you know keep 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 improving my stuff you know i think i think after i try out try uh after i work out with the uh, nba team i think i know more like what i need to improve myself as a basketball player so i think that's that's why i wanted to come back here and then improve that i need to, i needed to improve and he, i hear yeah all your teammates go on and on about how great of a teammate you are, how much they love playing basketball with you. What has it meant to you to be embraced by this group of guys and the guys you played with the last couple of years? Yeah, it meant a lot. You know, like, I also love to play, you know, as a Husker, as, you know, play with, with, with my teammate right now. Like, it's been great, you know. Like, I think I'm never going to forget, the, you know, this, mo this, this moment, this memory in my life, yeah. What do you like better, silencing a crowd on the road or hyping up the crowd in Pinnacle Bank Arena? Uh, I like the both. <laughs> it's hard to say like which one I like more, but I like the I like the doing the silence in the role game a lot. But I also like the hyping in the PBA a lot. So I don't I can say that which one I like better. Yeah, I like both. We've seen the environment grow since, since you first stepped on campus to what it is now and the way that this crowd supports you. What would you say to Oscar Nation for the way that they've supported you and this team and the, how, the environment that they've helped to create? Yeah, I'm, it's so thankful, you know, like to, you know, they're supporting us, you know, every single, every single home game, even like away game, like, they, you know, a lot of people come, you know, come cheer and like support us at the away game. So it's, you know, I don't think we can do it without them, you know, we can, we can do that without them. So it's. So thanks for, you know, to do that for us. And what has being a Nebraska Cornhusker meant to you? It's meant a lot, you know. Never, you know, never going to forget this experience, never going to forget this, you know, uh, memory in my life. So, yeah, it was great to be a Husker, you know, one of the Husker, you know. I'm certainly glad he chose to be a Husker. Man, what a career it's been for Casey Tominaga and, and how much his game has grown from being just a strictly a three-point shooter to everything that he can do on the court and how he opens things up for everybody else. I love the graphic that the Husker men's basketball team put out on social media today. They put the, the caption read, kept the receipts, and it said, uh, had a couple different newspaper articles that the title was Huskers picked 12th in the Big Ten and then had a couple other notes on here. Then, of course, talked about Huskers net their highest Big Ten seed ever. First time in school history that Nebraska went 10-0 and at home in conference play. Finished the regular season with a 22-9 and record matching the second highest win total in school history. And Nebraska's 12 conference wins ties for the second highest total in school history. So putting out some bullet points and again after being picked 12th preseason for how they would finish the league and they're going into the postseason tournament the big 10 tournament the number three seed so the huskers will play approximately eight o'clock on friday night they will wait to see who their opponent is they will face the winner of either number six indiana and the winner of number 11 penn state number 14 michigan so the Tournament all gets started on Wednesday night, and that first or that one of those matchups that to keep an eye on that could potentially be the Huskers matchup will be number 11 Penn State, number 14 Michigan, who the Huskers just beat yesterday, and then Indiana. So, um, but Greg and I were just talking. Hey, I think the Huskers will take any of those teams, but uh, certainly have the potential to go on a run here, and hopefully we're seeing back-to-back -back weekends of special runs from Husker basketball teams in the Big Ten tournament. So again, approximately eight o'clock on Friday. We will have the pregame show with Kent Pavelka and Jake Milheisen starting at 7 o'clock. All right, that's going to do it for this hour of our Nebraska men's basketball show. Coming up next, a whole other hour of Sports Nightly and a lot of sports to talk about. So keep it here. Greg Sharp joins me next.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex.
Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, a host of different Huskers were named Player of the Week in their respective sports by the Big Ten Conference. Sidney Gray was named Big Ten Softball Player of the Week for the second time this season. Gray was 5 for 16 with three home runs and five RBIs last weekend at the Razorback Rumble. Gray is the first Husker to win Player of the Week twice since Tristan Edwards in 2020. Rhett Stokes was Nebraska Baseball Player of the Week in the Big Ten after he went 9 for 12 with four doubles and five RBIs in the three games against South Alabama this past weekend. Stokes was the first Husker since 2021 to record three consecutive three-hit games. Nebraska men's gymnast Max Auden was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week following his performance against Illinois yesterday. Auden earned a first-place finish on high bar and helped the Huskers reach their season-best team score. Finally, Husker wrestler Ridge Lovett is the Big Ten champion after he defeated Michigan's Austin Gomez 5-4 in the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Nebraska finished third as a team with 118 points and clinched nine automatic bids to the NCAA Championships. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Hour two of Sports Nightly up next, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Bryce Williams puts his head down, drives the ball, third defender comes, can't score it. Put back in on a tip to high in the air above the cylinder, on a jam with the right hand. Jawan Gary. Runners second and third, two outs. One and two the count. The pitch from Chambers. Cope golfs one to center and deep. Going back Delgadillo, and it's gone! Three run home run, Emerson Cope. Make it 5 2 Nebraska. Brian Webb with the 3 0 pitch. Drilled into center field. Long run again for Verdusco. Onto the track. Looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Josh Karen's second home run of the night. This one a three run blast to right center field. Chili throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot, six to shoot. Chili for three. You! Betcha! Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here are your hosts. Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Welcome back. Hour number two of Sports Island here on a Monday night. I hope you enjoyed hearing from the Big Ten Coach of the Year last hour. <laughs> that will he, be official tomorrow. Yes, it will. He didn't want to he didn't want to accept that yet when Art in Los Angeles sent it in. <laughs> Art was the first to congratulate him, though. We do have to put that on there. Um, we have to document that Art was the first, but there's no question. And, no question. and we've been saying that for two weeks now. Yeah. He's Hands down, got to be the coach of the week and or coach of the year. Totally deserves it. Yes. I mean, what a job that staff has done. You you put it out there in the last hour. Pick for 12th, finish third, 22 regular season wins. I mean, my goodness. I think if you went back and rewound the tape to November, I think I was in the 19 range. I think you were close to that. I didn't see 22 coming out of this group. And in, in, in amongst those 22 are some pretty impressive wins, too. That yeah. You know, you knock off number one, Purdue. You beat a Wisconsin team that at the time was playing really well. You beat a Kansas State team that's really good. Mm -hmm. So the wins that they were, I don't think going into it, we expected Kansas State to be a win. You know, some of these other wins too. So it's not just, hey, they've racked up all these wins. They've got some impressive wins on the resume too. So, yeah, they. it's been special. It's been fun. And I loved how, you know, he even opened up the show – not wanting to talk about his team, but wanting to first congratulate Amy Williams and the women's basketball team and how much they were playing really close attention and trying to, you know, stay, keep tabs on what was happening for them. But that's been a neat relationship to see when a lot of times it crosses over where they'll have, we'll have those two in at the same time or they'll, one will be leaving and, and it's just neat to see how they interact and they certainly are really supportive. And how much fun is it when you have two teams like this that are making noise right now in March? Great. So it's great for, for, fan, for a fan base to have two teams like this and there are not a lot, in the grand scheme of things, there are not a lot of programs that have two teams no, like this. you're right. Kind of a bummer that they played at the same I know, time. I know, it was. Yes, they could have separated them an hour or something. I know that's just the way it fell, but, man, that was a bummer. Yes. People were burning out their remotes, I'm sure. Back I and had, forth, back and forth. Yeah, I had one on the TV and one on the laptop. laptop. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the way to do it. It was, 
I was trying to, you know, you can really only listen to one at a time, but it, yeah, that was the only thing is could we spread it out? But there was a lot going on yesterday that anywhere that they played, they were yeah. going to be bumping up against somebody. Yeah, competing Could with somebody. Could have been wrestling, Big Ten wrestling, yeah, which, which the finals were later in the day. No, they had on Saturday, they had wrestling sandwiching women's basketball. So, right. you know, you had to keep that into consideration. But how cool was it, too, that the women's game was on CBS? Yeah. That was awesome. So, uh, but yeah, no, the going back to the men's team, absolutely incredible season. And, and they cap it off with a win on the road, which they haven't had a lot of this year. But to be able to close it out, lock up the double by, and, um, you know, also get another win on the road to add to that resume. It was a good way to finish. I don't know that anybody on the planet could have beat Casey at a game of horse yesterday. <laughs> no. Right? I mean, <laughs> that was one of those things where it, he's thrown it into the ocean. Like everything that it's, it's the best feeling in the world as a shooter, everything you put up. Uh, Jazz Shelley felt it yeah. two days ago or yep. three days ago when she was. The Maryland game. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when you got that feeling, it is, and he had that feeling, it was everything was going in. Well, I think I texted you, I go, did our men just shoot 70% in the first half on the road? That's wacky Yeah. to be able to Which, do that. Part of that was, what, Casey was like five, six or something, four of, <laughs> yeah. he was unbelievable. I think he had 20 points at the under eight timeout in the first half. I know he yeah, had 24 right, with like 224 left, because I texted half. my family, hey, because they were watching the women's game. I was like, hey, you might want to tune over to the... Because they also love Casey. Yeah. But you might want to check out the men's game, too, if you can flip it over in between, because uh, he's playing out of his mind right now. Enjoyed your interview with him as well last hour. All right, let's talk about the women's game. My goodness, what a heartbreak. What a great effort against number three, Iowa, in the, in the championship game. And it was just a terrific run. I mean, they played so well against Michigan State, so well against Maryland. And they continue that into the second and the first half of the game of the Hawkeyes. They really had Iowa on their heels. Now, gr good teams, bordering on great teams, will come back, and Iowa did in the third quarter. But just what, taking it as a, in the whole, the whole tournament, what a great run that Nebraska had in Minneapolis. Oh, it was really impressive. And even, look, and you could see the emotion and the disappointment in the post-game presser from the coach Williams to the players, they wanted that one really badly. They wanted to win that. Like you would have thought, had you not known, you would have thought the season was over. Just that's how bad. And they left everything out there. They left it all it out there. But you, you said it. I mean, Iowa is the most prolific offense in the country. And you're not going to stop them. And Nebraska did as well as anybody has all season in that first half, especially. And But Caitlin Clark just, um, you know, held her to four points. And but they got it going and you got to keep scoring with them and for as well as Nebraska shot it throughout the entire what five days four days that the shots didn't they were not falling as well in that um second half and that's when Iowa was able to get back into it they started hitting shots Nebraska's didn't fall as much but boy what a fight they put up and they should now they beat they they played Iowa three times played them pretty close the first time I know it ended up yeah. Larger, but it was larger, than the but score. it was it yeah. was a pretty good battle. Then you beat them, and then you take them to overtime and have a really good opportunity. I mean, that's that's a pretty good um, you know statement that you made for the committee going into the postseason, and and also to yourselves because now you're saying, hey, look, Iowa's probably going to be a number one seed going into this NCAA tournament. Now, that's one of the best four teams in the country in the minds of pretty much everybody in women's college basketball, and and Nebraska went beat them once and then gave them everything they got the second time around right now in March. So, you know, when, when Nebraska's hitting shots the way that they did this week, they can compete with just about anybody in the country. And kind of what we said about that Purdue win with the men, they've proven that they can compete. Yeah. Now this, the women have proven what they can do, and that's got to give them a lot of confidence. I thought they, they, for as well as they shot it, boy, they played some great defense. I thought so many people contributed. How many times were when there was a, a need for a big play? Man, Kendall Coley hit some big buckets. Then it was Logan Nisley hit some big buckets. Callan Haig played really well. So, yeah, Jazz Shelley, Alexis Markowski did their thing. But then there were stretches of times where it was everybody contributing, and that's what it took, and that's what it will continue to take for this team to do continue to this special run into the NCAA tournament. Both Jazz and Alexis made the all-tournament team after the event was over. You know, Huskers had that eight-point lead right around two minutes to go, and Nebraska came down and missed a three. Didn't take much time off the clock. I see it both ways. You make that three, that's a dagger. Yeah. You have them down 11, it's over. 
But at that point in time, is it better to take more time away from Caitlin and their offensive possessions? When it happened, I'm like, Phew. I don't mind, I don't hate it, but also I can see it backfiring, and it, maybe it ended up doing that too. The way they were shooting, though, you know, and you don't want to say, hey, you know, you want to give them the green light to shoot it because Absolutely. we saw how well, I mean, they. And I think it was Logan. Was it Logan? Which Logan is arguably, yeah. arguably yeah. the best shooter on the team. Right. I mean, Jazz absolutely hit. I know she goes through her stretches, and she broke a tournament record but uh, with the amount of threes that she made. But pure shooter, you could argue that Logan Nisley's probably the best shooter on the team. Her, it comes out of pretty. So you don't, you don't question when she hits that, when she shoots that three. She um, had hit a couple big ones. But, yeah, eight points to Iowa is like three points sometimes to some people. They, they just can score in such a hurry that you do have to be mindful of that. It's almost like not even just playing defense when, when they have the ball. You also have to think about playing defense when you have the ball. Right. Against a team like Iowa. It was Callan Hake, by the way. It was a two, about 2.27 left. We had just gotten a steal. Jazz had a steal. We only took nine seconds off the shot clock. Callan missed the three. They get the rebound. Caitlin comes down and hits a tough three. Now it's all of a sudden a five-point game. And you're like, oh, boy. Uh, Going to be buckle-up time. And it was. What a terrific game. It's an instant classic. I think, that, and Coat would know for sure, and I'm sure he said this on his broadcast, but I didn't get a chance to hear. I believe that's the second time we've been tripped up by Iowa in the Big Ten championship game. It's like, God, they're just kind of a kryptonite for us to get in the finals. Have the ratings come out for that yet? I've not seen them. Um, no. They'll be good. It, it was awesome to yeah. see. I, I got chills when they were playing the CBS March Madness song, and for that's the first time ever that the Big Ten Women's Tournament was on CBS, but... Um, I bet the ratings are through the roof. I was sitting there thinking, like, you know, probably maybe the most watched basketball game of the day. Could have been, yeah. Of any, mm-hmm. any, any, yep. any game, men's or women's. Now, we were in a meeting today, and somebody did not like the commentary that was being done on the CBS broadcast. But, I, again, I didn't, I didn't hear it. it, so I, I can't comment. I didn't mind it. Okay. I didn't mind it at all. Um, I thought they did a pretty good job of not being, because I, I think we found that sometimes it is very much a, the Caitlin Clark show. Yeah. But I thought Nebraska really forced them not to allow, they did not allow them to make it the Caitlin Clark and, show. And Lisa Byington had the call. She's a long time. I love Lisa. Big I think and she, great. you know, she knows how good Nebraska's program is. So I would be disappointed if Lisa didn't give I did, it a fair I call. I didn't think that at all. Um, I thought, at this point, though, you know, as. If you're in TV, if you're in bro- a lot of it is though. It's the big storyline, and Caitlin Clark for she is. as much as we're the Nebraska side of it, there is a whole nation that's paying really close attention to Caitlin Clark. But I think when the way that Natalie Potts is playing, Alexis Markowski, they, I thought they made it pretty. I thought it was a pretty fair call. I actually did. You know, and that's the thing. You and I've talked about this. Some in football fans are like, "Oh, is this horrible broadcasting?" And I'm listening to it, or you listen to it, you're like. Yeah, I didn't really get that, so I'm not I, sure that is a problem. I don't know. So. I, I, I think yeah, maybe <laughs> if you're a fan, but if I don't know, I just it's hard for me to see it that way, just because yeah. I, I think they try their best to be pretty pretty fair. And I would I would expect that out of Lisa. Now, you and I talked about this a lot last week, and we won't know until Sunday. Did the run help the seeding? Did the run bump Nebraska up a couple of seed lines? We won't know until Sunday night when the parents come out. I got to believe it will. I just think you win two games against two quality teams that will both be in the tournament, and then what you deal with Iowa, that has to mean something. Yeah, I, I think it definitely did. And Coatney has a theory on this about, you know, the geography of it and, and where you send teams and – how many teams are certainly are going to the West Coast, and does Nebraska fit in that? Can you maybe move them around a little bit to fit a certain seed, to fit a location? But I think absolutely it improved their standing of where, and, and Cotney will explain it in, maybe you're, if you were a nine seed and you were maybe at the high end of the nine seed, maybe you were the fourth nine seed or the third nine seed, and maybe you move up to being the first or second eight seed, which they will on paper maybe give you a better matchup than if you were the fourth eight seed. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot, that, you know, we can maybe speculate and go into it, but I think absolutely they had to improve their standing in the eyes of the committee, not only making it to the championship game, but taking Iowa, the number one seed, who is going to be a number one seed more than likely, right. 
in the postseason, the way that Nebraska played them, not only just in the championship game, taking them to overtime, but beating them the last time they played. So, um, you know, I think absolutely they're, they're going to be mindful of that. Now, I don't know how much we, we have a lot to unfold here the rest of this week. The Big 12 tournament has spread it out. They play tomorrow night, which is a little bit weird. Their Normally, finals tomorrow. They, yeah. It would have been done. So there are still some women's games, I think, to, to be played. SEC unfold. was yesterday, by the way. Oh, that was bonkers. That was bonkers. Yeah. Um, but there's still a few things to unfold. But I think right now you're probably looking at a 7 or an 8. I'd love to see that 7 line pop up when the bracket comes up on Sunday. And, and you know... And, I'll, hey, I'll admit right away, I'm clearly biased, but I think both the men and women are not being seated appropriately right now. I think both of them should be above the eight line. I just do. Look at the eye test, you know? Exactly. For both of them. How do you not watch what Nebraska did in the Big Ten tournament and think, oh, that's a nine seed? Yeah. You know, and then you watch what Nebraska men did yesterday, or really at any point. I don't. They've played so well that I just don't know how you watch them and think, that's a nine seed. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. The men's selection show is at 5 o'clock. Sunday, the women's is at 7. Uh, so we'll have more details about all of that as we get later on in the week. The men are hoping to watch the selection show from the arena in Minneapolis, which would mean they're in the finals. How great is That's it? We're making hoping. plans for selection Sunday for Love both it. teams. Love it. That's great. we got a lot to get to in the hour. We'll talk some wrestling. The Big Tens are over the weekend. We'll talk some indoor track and field. The indoor season is over. Nebraska had, I think it was eight All-Americans with their performances over the weekend. Nine Husker wrestlers are headed to the NCAs in a couple of weeks down in Kansas City. So a busy weekend with that. And we'll certainly love to hear your thoughts on all this at 402-413-2400. We're going to hear some of Amy Williams' post-game remarks after yesterday's uh, game up against the Hawkeyes in Minneapolis. We'll have that for you in just a couple minutes as well. All of that being done on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back with some comments from the head coach next. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, Chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. 
nebraskafarmfacts.com. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL like no other. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Merch Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Doug in Norfolk said, I think the women get a six or seven seed based on the net ranking, and the men are a solid seven. That's my two cents. I'm with you, Doug. I think both, I think you nailed it on both those. That's where I would put them. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. I mean, what's crazy to me with in terms of the net ranking is that look what the whole body of work, but one game, the loss to Rutgers is really killing the women's overall ranking because they're probably top 20 without that loss. Right Agreed. there, maybe, maybe 18 to 20 range. So, but one loss, but then you look at what they've done here at the end of the season, but yet it's still dragging them down. So, which is why you hope that the committee doesn't just rank them on the net ranking alone, and you look at the whole body of work. And I think the whole body of work, especially one of the one of the points is of emphasis is how well are you playing right now? Yes. And I don't know how you can argue there's many teams playing as well as Nebraska women's basketball right now, and especially when there's some other teams that may be trending the other way. So I we sat here last week and looked at some of the teams that were ahead of Nebraska on that six seven line, and some of them should not be there now, and Nebraska should be taking that spot. Which uh, Autumn, who we said did a good job for the Big Ten Network, she is a bracketologist, and she said that absolutely Nebraska should take Michigan State's spot because no Michigan question. State was on the seven seed. Line. No question. So they should at least by by all regards at least take Michigan yeah. State's spot. All right, Amy Williams met with the media after the, the heartbreaking loss yesterday. Question to her was, how did Iowa disrupt some of those plays late in the game? Yeah, I mean, I thought they picked up their defensive pressure. They knew um, that Jazz Shelley had a game winner against them um, at our place and uh, when we were able to 
to knock them off. And so I think they tightened things up on that. Um, I would have too. Um, she was making plays. She had 13 uh, assists on the day, uh, making plays for our team. And so I thought they got a little bit more aggressive, got some uh, deflections, kind of disrupted some of our timing. But um, you know, from from my standpoint, if we're if we're able to score, you know, we out or tied them in the fourth quarter and then scored 12 points in overtime. We still offensively were doing the things we needed to do. Um, just gave up a few too many there in overtime. Yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like they, I will really turned it on in those last few, and then they they got fueled by the crowd, which. Jazz mentioned, hey, we're, we're basically playing a road game. Yeah. A rowdy road game. That's, I would ban, sold that thing out, and it was, they kept saying it over and over again, Carver North. So then you you get a little thing, you get some momentum going, and then the crowd gets behind it. And I, I just think Iowa really turned it up and tried to do the things that Nebraska had been doing so well. Natalie Potts, another really good tournament for her, and the coach was asked about her impact on the team during the tournament and really for the entire year. Yeah, Natalie's impact has been huge. Um, I think she's just a winner that knows how to win and wants to make big plays and finds ways to do it on both sides of the ball. And I can't ever predict, really, if it's going to come from scoring, if it's going to come from rebounding, if it's going to come offensive rebounds, if it's going to come defensive deflections, um, block shots. You know, I don't really know exactly, but I know she's going to impact games. And um, she comes from really successful programs where uh, they expect to win and she's brought that expectation right here to Nebraska. I've heard this coaching staff, whether it be assistants, Amy, even players say that about her from the start. She hates to lose more than she loves to win. She is one of those types of competitors. And even when I talk to her, you know, she's like, I just I hate to lose. I love to win. She just has that mentality and boy when she turns it on she just wants to make those plays, whatever she can do to, to help her team win. She doesn't care if it's scoring, rebounding, whatever she needs to do to make those winning plays, boy. And she has done it time and time again. It's why she won, deservedly so, by the coaches, Big Ten Freshman of the Year and should have won both. She should have swept both. And, you know, really with Logan Nisley's run late in the year and, and Jess Petrie, too. I mean, that freshman class, wow, well, three of them are going to be – cornerstone for this team. Absolutely. And Cotney, this coaching staff, a lot of people will say the reason why they've been able to start putting some things together is what Logan Nisley has done to yeah. be able to relieve some of the pressure inside for Natalie and Alexis Markowski because teams are just packing it in. And the way that Logan can shoot the ball, you can you have to you have to take note of her and Jess Shelley on the floor together. You cannot not guard them. Yeah. And so it just allows for so many things to open back up. She stepped up and hit some threes and some moments that you're like yeah talk about a freshman that's freshman with ice in her veins and i know we got a text from mark that said about how excited he is about the future we we made note of that i think last week about with logan and um natalie and and jess petrie you could argue jess petrie's been the most improved player all season so there's some absolutely some bright young stars on this this program right now all right composure toughness i think that was on display by the oscars throughout the tournament uh, the coach was asked, has that been a hallmark of your team all season? It kind of has been a hallmark, and um, we've been preaching response, response, response. How do you respond when things go good? How do you respond when things go bad? How do you respond when there's adversity that comes through a season? How do you respond when there's adversity that comes through a game? And um, I'm just so proud of the way that they have responded. I thought they did. Um, they, they shut out the, um, the noise, the, the outside noise, and just were able to lock in. And, and every single time it felt like we had an answer and, and we're at answering r runs. And I think um, that just shows their commitment to wanting to have a positive response and do the next best thing on every step. I think that was one of the biggest things for me after watching these last four games unfold is how they responded in the moments of adversity in times of runs because you're going to face that and that's what makes me think okay this is a team that's built to maybe do some things special in the postseason because it is about that's it's how you respond in those types of moments and they they the way that they were tested and and just punched right back 
that um, bodes well for a team that wants to maybe win some games uh, continuing in March. I think we saw a great example of that Saturday. Maryland made yes. that run back in it, and Nebraska said, yep. nope, not today. We're going to get to the finals. Yeah, and Something Maryland is not an easy team to no. beat. And no. they, you know, Brenda Fries is talking about how, oh, we're built for March, and Maryland looked impressive, too, at they stretches did. during their, their stretch because they hadn't even had to play an extra game, too. They had to play the game before it, right, they had to play in the no, no, they, no, no, they, they were had just the same day they as had a single buy. Yeah. So, but they had to play too, and they were they looked impressive yeah. and, and throughout their game. So that was a big win too, beating Maryland. You know, the two teams that needed a good tournament were Michigan and Maryland. Both and of they them both had got that, it. Yeah. So, so I, I think, think they're both going to get in. You're going to have a good showing from the Big Ten and the NCAA tournament, yeah. no doubt. All right, last one, uh, Coach. What was their message to the team after the game ended? Yeah, I think right now I'm just going to let them um, feel the moment um, and, and really kind of soak this up. Um, it's okay um, for them to, to have some time to, to really be disappointed because they put their heart and souls on the line up here, and nobody else did, but we expected to win. And, um, and so when you fall short of that, that's okay. You know, we, with four games to go in the regular season, we had a little picture that put us – in the double by bracket and we cut it into a four piece puzzle and we had four games left and we said let's put all four pieces of that puzzle together and we fell a little short at Illinois against a really really veteran um, tough team on the road and we, we spent a lot of time as a team talking about how do you respond when you set goals for yourself and they don't happen you just reset and find new goals to go after. And that's exactly what we will eventually get to, Amy, is setting new goals for our team. We feel like we are incredibly poised to make a run in the next tournament. And, um, and it's going to take every single soul on our team, given just what they did up here in the Big Ten tournament. What an incredible message right there. I mean, that's a mic drop to end things on. I mean, it hurt. You can tell how much this this hurt this team, and that's what you want. If you're a fan, you want to see that, man, this this really burns us that we did. And it's not just like, okay, nope, we got more to play for. No, they wanted that one really badly. So they are going to take a couple a couple days, and, and they'll process it, and then they'll get back to it. But I, I guarantee you they're going to take a lot of positives away. They're going to be fueled by that. And they're going to see the things that they can do when they when they put it all together like they did over these last four days so or last five days. So, uh, yeah, but the emotion was it was inevitable. You could see it all over their faces. Coach Williams right there and then the players when they were addressing it. That one stung, but uh, hopefully they'll find fuel from it. Mark on our text line says still a ways to go this year and losing Jazz and a few others is going to hurt. But Nebraska's future looks bright. My question to you guys, how much does Iowa have coming back? If after losing Clark this year, she sure seems to make that entire roster better. They lose a lot, don't they? Yeah, they do. And Kate Martin is a graduate senior. And then Gabby Marshall's a graduate senior. I think they've got three. Um, then Molly that hasn't played, the Molly D that um, Gus calls her Molly D, she's a senior. Um, she's been hurt, but uh, they lose quite a bit on their, their roster. They, they do. They, and then not to mention Kate and again, Clark. They're a good program. I'm sure they've recruited well to, to get that in. I was thinking the other day about we're talking about Alexis being preseason player of the year. She might, but I forgot we're bringing those four schools in and Juju Watkins is, a, oh, yeah, is at USC. True. Yeah, so she, totally forgot about that. She's going to be good. So the, the women's league is only going to get better with those four coming in. Those are four really good programs yeah, that absolutely. we're adding to this. Yep, yep. Adding She's to this going to get tougher. Yeah. All right, 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text. Let's go to the phones. Let's go out to Grand Island. And Debbie, good evening, Debbie. Good evening. I just, um, as a widow of a man that thought a lot of you, Amy, um, Barry Schultz, um, I was just so proud. I don't, I just, it's emotional all of a sudden, but um, it was just so great to see all of those girls come together and gel and just look like an amazing, fantastic team and your composure to do what you did as a coach and lead them where they are. We're just so proud of them as a nation. Cornhusker Nation. So thank you so much for all you do and what you did for them. Thank you, Debbie. I think Debbie summed up a lot of fans' feelings right now. There is no doubt. You watch the way that they fought and played, and that was a team to be proud of and came up just a little bit short, but there is no doubt. They rallied, and they rallied a, together a bunch of fans that I know love watching them anyways, but the way that 
Boy, they came together and put it all together. Absolutely something to be proud of. It's good stuff there. All right. Our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More of the show coming up next. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity, with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months, plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150, plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at woodhouse.com where we have made buying a car easier than ever. 
Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle Light and Lean Dressing. Endless flavorabilities. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you on a Monday night. We're not many shows this week. We've got baseball tomorrow and Wednesday at Wichita State. Jess will have a full two-hour show for you Thursday. And then you're going to do an hour show. I'll be doing baseball Friday leading up to Kent and Jake from the tournament. It's a good problem to have yes. when you have to rearrange this show schedule Love to it. be able to have... The men play have a double buy on Friday night, but because of where they they play, we will have an hour leading into another pregame to the pregame show. Love it. Take that in. Kent doesn't want to fill the whole two hours. I don't know. We have to ask him. You ask him. No, I'm not asking <laughs> that. Let's uh, go to Plattsmouth. Andrew. Good evening, Andrew. You are on Sports Nightly. Good evening. Hello, young man. Uh, I was I was wondering if Tommy Nago will be on an NBA roster next year. What do you think, Jess? I, Thanks for the call, first of all, Andrew. How Appreciate old are you, you calling Andrew? in. Uh, 11. Is he your favorite Husker? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you think he should make an NBA team? Yeah. I, well, I, I agree with you, but I don't know. We'll have to see. It all depends on kind of the fit that he goes to. There's a couple times that maybe players you don't expect to make a team end up going to the right team. And if he performs well in NBA Summer League and the, the pre-draft process, if he has some good workouts. But he's going to have a chance to play for his home country of Japan in the Olympics and maybe play some professional league in some professional leagues there. But I think he'll definitely get an opportunity to maybe make a team. He'll just have to perform really well to end up making the team. Yeah, thank you. You're right. You're welcome, Andrew. You know, he certainly, if you do something really well, you have a chance, and he shoots it really well. We all know that. He's going to have to be better on the defensive end because yeah. in the NBA, I know that people laugh and say they don't play defense. They do. They do when it matters. They do. And if you can't guard a guy, your plus minus really becomes an issue for a team. So he's going to have to get better on that. But always we'll, we'll been told see. that everybody can use a shooter. That's but, right. That's you know, right. he's he's definitely. Yeah. And we just heard Fred say last last hour that he's definitely one of the best shooters he's ever coached. He's up there at the top. So, you know, things have to go right for him, and he's got to go to the right team if he gets drafted and, and do things right from here on out. But he certainly has a chance, I would think, to maybe have an opportunity to maybe try out and maybe make a team. Let's head up to Omaha. And, Mark, good evening. Mark, you are on Sports Highly. Hello, Mr. Sharp. Hello, Miss Goody. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, th this is uh, my comments are on the girls' team, the basketball team. Um, they, I, I watched them most of the year, and I have never been really impressed with them on uh, uh, through the season. Um, but for these four days in in uh, up in Minnesota, from the coaches down to the players, they played fantastic. Um, I thought. I, I, I have never seen them play this loose with the chip. Um, they just played well. I, I, I wouldn't even pick one person out because uh, they all played well who came into these games. And um, they really did a great job. I just, you know, they had the chances to win that game yesterday. But um, Iowa, to me, got lucky just like Nebraska got lucky last month up in Lincoln when they beat Iowa. So hopefully this carries over into the postseason, and um, I hope they do real well. Mark, appreciate it. I think that's fairly accurate. I, I think, you know, it, I, I, Jess and I kind of at times were like, I don't know where if we're very good or not, but there was kind of a freeness about the way they played in Minneapolis where they just they let it loose, and they were a different-looking type team, I thought, in Minneapolis. Yeah, they. but what's luck? I don't know. What's lucky? I don't. I don't. I don't well, know. Well, you're down 14 
to Iowa at home. I, I think there was a little bit of fortune rolling your way that time. Yeah, but I mean, part of it too is just the ball bouncing your way and making things happen. And I don't know if you could say, I think it's just part of the game of basketball. And gas basketball is a game of runs, and it's how you respond to those runs. And Iowa is certainly a team that's capable of going on runs. Nebraska is a team, have, they've proven how well they shoot the ball, they're capable of going on runs. So yeah. I think they shot it really well. And, and you and I have said this from the start when they don't shoot it well, yeah, they're. It's, it kind of can be some tough goings. But when they are shooting it well as a team, which they certainly have the capability of doing, they have a, they have a lineup where they got lots of shooters on the floor. Kellen Haight can shoot it. Mm -hmm. Kendall Coley has proven she can shoot it. Alexis Markowski can shoot it. Uh, Jazz obviously can shoot it. And then Logan Nisley. But when you've got that lineup on the floor that can really knock it down and it's, it's all clicking, they are a really tough team to beat because of that alleviates the pressure inside. And I've said it time and time again, Alexis Markowski is one of the best bigs in the country. And for women's basketball too, when you have a really elite post player, it can really separate yourself. And especially when you are able to open things up and allow her to go to work, which Iowa had to do yesterday. How many times did she win her one-on-one -on -one battles? Because they, you can't double team her when you have Logan Nisley, Jazz Shelley, Catlin Hake all, all making, knocking down threes. So, the way when it comes together for this team, they are absolutely a dangerous team. Yep. All right. I uh, want to give a quick shout out to Ridge Lovett. Won the Big Ten wrestling meet at Maryland over the weekend. Disappointed that he was the only Husker to make the finals. Thought we'd have a couple more guys make the championship round. They didn't, but Ridge took care of his business and looks like he's ready to go after a natty. In a couple weeks. Yeah, we said he'd probably be on a mission coming yeah. off the, his one loss, but didn't was not surprising to see him do what he did. He's been dominant all season. He's on a mission. He's been on a mission. Um, he's on a different level. I was disappointed. I thought we'd have a couple more guys in those in the I finals. Did I yeah. really did. Um, apparently, Lenny Pinto got the raw end of the deal in, in his semifinal or semifinal semifinal. Match. Um, yeah. But I thought maybe we'd see a. Peyton Rob, Brock Hardy, Silas Allred, maybe one of those guys in get to the finals. But hey, the ultimate goal is the national title. And a lot of times we see the guys that go on to win national titles or maybe teams that win Big Ten titles not do as well at nationals. So maybe they're saving it up for the nationals. But they still have a, a chance to go do something special at the national tournament. Nine guys made it to the. Uh... NCAA tournament. That's last year only eight. So nine Husker wrestlers, including the polar bear. He qualified by getting a couple wins at a Big Ten. So congratulations to him and all the other eight. That's great. That's a lot of guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And hey, the more guys that you have wrestling, the more opportunities you have to get points, sure. which add to the team total. So a lot of times, I think it was what, was it two years ago maybe or last year? They just didn't have enough guys right. to rack up the points. And you have to have guys not only compete for national titles, but I had a wrestling coach at OU tell me one time, the key to winning a national title is what you do in the wrestlebacks. So for guys, when they, they don't win, what they go do and compete in the consolation bracket. So you, you got to have guys that are really bringing their A game from start to finish. And, and even if they fall in a and fall to the loser's bracket to still try to go compete and, and rack up some team points. Penn State was absolutely dominant. I think they set a record for the number of points they racked up as a team. They just were, they were brilliant, and I kind of thought they might be close to home. I knew they'd have a big cheering section there at Maryland. Hey, contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. We're back to wrap it up and get everybody's weekend winners next. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office.
Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation has known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Time for everybody's weekend winners. I'm going to start with Camden. Camden, you get to lead us off tonight. All right. Um, I'm going to go with a former Husker. I'm going to go Delano Banton. Um, he played hmm. Friday and Saturday. Um, he's with the Blazers now. But yeah, he's no longer with the Raptors, right? Yeah, he's with the Blazers. Okay. And so he's getting a lot of time with the Blazers now. He had 30 points Whoa. on Friday, um, 8 rebounds. And then on Saturday against the Raptors, he had 25 points and 7 rebounds. Good for him. That's a guy that I didn't think would get drafted. There's a, a great example. You're like, I'm not sure. And then he's having a pretty good career. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, it's, it's yeah, I think probably most people, if you ask the experts, will say no, he's not going to. But you never know. You yeah. never know. All right, what do you have? I mean, I don't know how you can't go with anything other than the women's basketball team. Just a special run that they went on to get into the tournament. We've seen so many people that have chimed in about it. They captivated Husker Nation for four days. And so I think they, they built a lot of things, showed a lot of things that they can take into the March Madness. Okay. Mr. Cole. Outside of women's hoops, I'm going to go with Saturday's starter for Nebraska baseball, Brett Sears. Eight innings. Eight innings. Great, great how game. How did he not Two get runs pitcher of the out. week? Right. <laughs> Dig this. His his season stats so far: 25 innings pitched, ERA of 1.78, a WHIP of 0.52. Point, uh, which a, any kind of a WHIP under one's right. really good. Right. Yeah. So that's easy win. My winner. I can't believe it's still out there. Ridge Lovett, Big Ten champion, wins at 149 and on his way. I think maybe to a Natty in a couple weeks. Yes. And a couple honorable mentions. How about men's gymnastics? One, 416, that's an unbelievable, that's a school record by like six points. Put up a massive number. Yeah, they're and doing well. Sydney Gray was named the Big Ten Player of the Week. There was a lot of good things happening. We had some All-Americans on the track. I told you weeks ago, every time I see Chuck Smoke, he's smiling. <laughs> he knows something. There's a lot of special things going on around yeah, here. Good stuff. All right, no show the next two nights. In fact, I'll be in Wichita uh, with baseball. Husker baseball tomorrow, 6 o'clock, first pitch, 530 for pregame coverage. And the same thing Wednesday. Jess is back with you on Thursday for a full show. Crypto says the winner has to be Cole for telling the best joke on his birthday. <laughs> But that was Thursday. That wasn't over the weekend. Yeah. So, hey, he's eliminated. Have a great <laughs> night. Thanks to Camden and Cole. You all be good. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Farming Today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your